So welcome to this video and it's on ABS modules. So there's two main manufacturers of ABS modules. You've got Bosch and ATE. And this one is the ATE Mark 60. And as people may know from my previous video, I had a 5DF5 error code, which means the module's no good. So what I've done is I've removed it, as we can see here. And my intention is to actually open this up and see if I can mend it. So what I will do though, as a word of warning, is once you remove this, if you get air into it, you might need a diagnostic software to actually purge the air out or have to take it to a garage to get them to do it. So I've capped it all off in the hope that I don't get air in it, but there is a risk now that once I put this back in, there may be air in here and I might have a bit of a problem. So I've taken that gamble, but it's worth noting, you, you know, you may have an issue. We'll find out when I put it back in. And hopefully by capping it all off, it's worked and it's, it'll be okay. But what we've got in here apparently is there is a pressure sensor and they've got tiny little wires finer than a human hair, which is ideal um, in such a sort of hostile environment as a car. And they can break and then you, the module then gives us a 5DF5 code and several other codes. Uh, there's also talk about there's a connector strip in here that is pushed on and over time the connections sort of you know break and again that can cause the issues so I'm going to see if I can't solder those connections but I've got to obviously open this up first um, but anyway so that's for another video but in, so in this video I remove this show you all the pipe work at the back, master cylinder and everything, and also a bit about how to make the ends on brake pipes. So hopefully you'll enjoy this video. And then my next one will be taking this thing apart. So, thank you. So please be aware that removing the ABS hydraulic control module may require a scan tool to bleed the air from the ABS unit afterwards. So, using a pedal prop to depress the brake pedals slightly, this will minimise fluid loss when the brake pipes are disconnected. So what I'm going to use is some extensions, just to press the brake pedal ever so slightly, as mentioned in the manual. So, here's some overview photographs before I actually get started. So in this photo we can see the brake master cylinder area and the brake ABS module area and also the battery lid and box. And here we can see the coolant expansion bottle, power steering bottle and the ABS hydraulic control module and also in the corner there is the fuel cutoff switch. And in this photo we can just see the coolant expansion bottle and the power steering bottle. And in blue is the electrical multi-pin connector to the ABS control unit. And here's a closer view of the master cylinder and the servo. So I'm going to remove the battery and the tray for better access. You may not need to do this. So we just pull the weather sealing off there like so. And then we can just take the top off the battery. And then using a 10 millimeter socket, we remove the negative first. That way it prevents shorting anything out. And then we can go on to the positive, and again that's a 10mm. And then we can just lift that clear. There is another little piece of rubber protection there. So I'll just pop that off. And there is a little vent pipe in there for the battery. So we can now remove the positive. Looks like it does need a bit of a clean that. Definitely got some corrosion going on. And then for the bracket, again it's a 10mm socket. Okay, so the battery should now just lift out. And this is an Exide EB620. 
and I'm just going to remove the connectors to the main ECU. That just lifts up and then you pull the connector off from the back like that and off it comes. And we've obviously got the other one to do as well, so just pull it away from the module and off it comes. Just trying to show you there. It's a pretty big connector that. So that's the main brain of the car I presume. So this is the battery tray and this is showing you the 10mm fixings. Now I did actually have one that wouldn't come out which is at the back left hand side and caused me a great deal of hassle trying to get that out. So it had rusted and wasn't going to come out, just kept spinning around. But anyway, the, we sorted that out in the end. And the battery tray now does come out. Like so. So I'll show you the bottom of this. There is actually a red positive lead clipped underneath, so don't just yank it up. There's the positive lead. And that's the battery box. Like so. So now we can remove this little plastic weather shield there. And what I'm going to do to try and minimise brake fluid loss is I'm going to put a bit of heavy duty cling film over the top of this to try and create a vacuum so that hopefully the fluid won't just drain away once I start undoing the pipes. So I'm going to remove the coolant and power steering bottles and bracket to show more detail for the camera. Again, you may not need to do this. So for me, I'm using a 10mm socket here just to undo the power steering clamp bolt. And again, it's 10 millimeter for the two nuts that hold this bracket in position. Like I said, I want to take this off so that you can actually see behind, so you can see all the pipe work going from the master cylinder to the ABS unit. So I'll just pop that bracket out of the way there. And then for the coolant bottle, it's a 13 millimeter socket. And it's just the one nut. And then that just lifts up and away. And then finally, there is a bracket behind that I need to remove. So here's a photo of that bracket. And there's four 13mm bolts holding that in position. So we'll get these off with our 13mm socket. And this should allow the plastic panel behind to then come away. And that will then show all the various pipes behind. So that's the bolts for that. There's three of them out. And the last one. And then that is still connected to the heat shield near the exhaust. But anyway, so I should remove the next weather shield and then this plastic part. Now there is a brake servo pipe behind that's clipped on on two clips. So you do need to be careful that you don't pull the pipe with it. So here it comes and you can see the brake servo pipe behind now. And I'll show you those two clips. There they are, there's one there and one there. And that's the brake servo pipe going to the engine. So I'm going to add yellow tape to identify the SC line, which I presume is the rear, and blue tape to identify the PL line, which I'm thinking is the front. So as far as I understand it, looking at some photos on the internet, this pipe that I'm putting the yellow onto is marked as SC on the ABS unit and can also be marked with the letter H 
which I believe in German is for rear. So presumably this is for the rear braking and then when I put the blue on this is going to the PC part of the ABS module and again I've seen that with a V on it which in German would be for the front brakes so don't quote me on that but as far as I can tell that is possibly why you have the two brakes for front and rear separately okay so we can now see most of the pipework between the master cylinder and the ABS module so this is why I took the cover off so hopefully you're able to see where all the pipes are actually going like so and then I'll go in a bit closer and you can actually see the clutch pipe there on the back of the bulkhead that goes to the slave cylinder so before removing the ABS unit I'm going to make little plug caps the idea being to hopefully minimize fluid leakage and air entering the module as I start to remove the various pipes I'm hoping this will avoid me needing to bleed the ABS unit afterwards so you could probably seal the ABS unit with tape or something but since I have brake flaring equipment I may as well utilize it to hopefully avoid the need to purge that ABS of air so what I'm going to do, I'll only show this once is I'm just going to take a bit of 4.75 millimeter copper pipe and I'll deburr that like so make sure none of that actually gets into the ABS unit that could be quite disastrous but it can be handy to see the process of making a brake pipe end so in this little pot I have five little presses so we've got one there another one there that's not what I need this is the one I need so I'll pop that to one side and I don't need that one and I don't need this one either but that's what comes in the set so we'll take this one which is the 4.75 millimeter DIN single mushroom flare punch and that's for operation number one some of them have two operations if you're going to create a double flare so we then need to mount this onto the quick release connector of the hydraulic part of the tool like so now the tool has formers and we have a quick look at that because this set has two formers two sets and this is the 4.75 millimeter former and that will do DIN and SAE flares so one is flat and one is concave and again we've got the same here for the six millimeter die as well that would probably be used for the pipes from the master cylinder so they use the DIN on here so if we look here you can see that says DIN and the other end says SAE but it's DIN that we want on the mini so I'm going to tighten my pipe into that with the end of it flush to the die like so we can now mount the bracket and then carefully put the punch in you can take this handle off while you do it so you just got to carefully line that up so that the punch actually goes into the center of the pipe I'm trying to show that there I think it's shown on the camera and then tighten that 
and now we can put this handle on to hydraulically force the press into the pipe and this should give us a nice mushroom connector so if we take that out now So there it is, nicely formed. So that's the DIN single mushroom flare. And then what we need to do is pop that onto an M10 by one male union, like so. And then what I will do is crimp the end. But just before crimping the end, I'll show you what it looks like when it's actually in the die and the press so you can sort of see a sideways view of what actually happens so it's basically like that and that's how it's made but anyway we pop this union back on and then we're just going to crimp this end and hopefully that will give me an airtight seal which will save any air or fluid leaking from the ABS module that should be pretty airtight I hope so if I make a few of those I can then pop them in as I take these brake pipes out so all these brake pipe fittings are 11 millimeters that's the original fittings so some of the ones I'm putting in are slightly different so as I've taken that out now I'm just going to pop this homemade plug in like I said you could perhaps use a little plastic cap or something um, but I'm a little bit paranoid that if air gets in technically you need a diagnostic tool to bleed this pump and get the air out and I don't have that so I'm hoping I'm going to get away with this um, I may not but I'm hoping I will so you might have noticed I think there's only two M10 uh, unions on here this is one of them and it appears to be for the rear right and the front right the rest of them I think are all M12 if I'm correct now if you do get some that are very tight the fear of a spanner is you can actually round the head off so this is why these um, sort of like a specialist spanner can be somewhat useful because they grip all the way around and you can obviously pop it over the brake pipe and so it holds the union completely and minimizes any chance of you messing the head up definitely useful on the wheels where you get a lot of corrosion and the heads can often just go round so we'll take that one off now and plug that up so for the unions I'm using it's a 13 millimeter spanner like I say you'll notice the two others on the top <coughs> are clearly bigger here's one for example and I think these are M12 so that's all the brake pipes off now so I'll just plug the last hole I obviously used an M12 union there so now we can disconnect the multi-plug and remove the ABS module so with this plug if you lift this lever up it disconnects it and actually pushes it away slightly so we've got one bolt here which is 10 millimeter but somehow I managed to take it out by hand so I think this ABS unit has been replaced once before definitely seems to have a lot of writing on which presumes it may have come from a scrapyard I can't see the manufacturer writing all that stuff on in pen 
So using a 5mm hex key we can undo the two bolts at the bottom like so. You want to be careful with these as well. Try not to drop them or anything. So this is the last one. Mind you may not be as clumsy as I am. But I do have a habit of dropping things like so. <laughs> My tripod will now enter stealth mode. Pewk. So anyway, so now the ABS unit should be able to come forward and out underneath those pipes. Like so. So it definitely looks like a second hand unit. There's a lot of writing on there, which is what I think scrapyards normally do to identify their parts. So these things obviously do fail quite a lot. So anyway, so here's some reference photographs which you can pause to view for longer. So here's basically the view of the pipework at the back on the bulkhead and the master cylinder and the ABS module. And here we can see the actual fluid supply to the clutch master cylinder in red and the brake level sensor connector. And there is the clutch pipe running along the back of the bulkhead. There's another photo there showing the clutch line to the slave cylinder. And here is that slave cylinder for the clutch and the bleeder valve in blue. And here's what appears to be a 47 pin connector for the ABS module. And there's the wiring as it presently stands. And then here's some photos of the ABS control unit. So you've got the basically the pump motor there on the back and the hydraulic unit is in the middle with the electronic control unit on the other side. So it's almost like a sandwich. So there's the pump motor and there's the end of the pump motor. And that's the control panel information. And for a bit more information on the making of brake pipes, here's a little bit of extra material. So strictly this video isn't about making brake pipes, but I thought it might be useful to include some information on the five punches. So this is a 6mm Operation 1 DIN punch, which would probably be used on the master cylinder to the ABS lines. And... This again is 6mm and Operation 1, but this is SAE, which is probably for the older vehicles. Because that's Imperial. So here we have what is a bubble flare. And again, so this is SAE, but for 4.75mm. And again, it's an Operation 1 punch. And that gives you the bubble like that. Again, I believe that might be for older vehicles. Now this one is an Operation 2 punch. So what you do is you make a bubble flare, like so, and then you go onto this one for the Operation 2. And I think this one does DIN and SAE. And basically you get that effect there. And that punch pushes down on the bubble to give it the second bend. And this is the one we obviously used in the video, which is the standard 4.75mm Operation 1 DIN, which gives you the mushroom head because it's flat on the bottom and is slightly domed on the top. So that's the main punches that you may come across. So you've been watching how to replace the ABS control module on a Mini 1R50. And thank you for watching and I hope this video helps you replace or repair your Mini ABS control module. This video was filmed and edited by me, Mark Savage, in May 2021. I can also be found on Instagram and Facebook 
undercoats and gaiters.